Well, good morning, Bulldogs past and present. As uh, Mr. Lewis said, I'm Dave Craddock. It's my privilege to serve as pr principal of the best high school in town, Centennial High School. And I'm proud to serve as uh, the welcoming act here before we get to the, to the main course. Uh, it's an honor for me to participate in this honored tradition, which celebrates amazing Bulldogs and their accomplishments. Um, I sure would like to extend a sincere welcome to the families, friends, and colleagues of our honored guests here today who have come from near and far to celebrate with us. Welcome also to our wonderful students and our staff for being a part of this incredible celebration. Celebration is the key word. Um, these people that you'll get to know today serve as exemplars, and I'll get into that really quick in just a minute, but they came before us, and, and boy, um, their experiences have a lot to teach us. Also, I'd be remiss as we lead up to Veterans Day on Saturday um, if we didn't extend a special thank you to the veterans in our community and to those of you here today. To us, you embody some of the best values, including duty, purpose, commitment, courage, and discipline. These are attributes that never go out of style and are important to model and share with every generation. Thank you for your service to our country, our community, and our school. You have our respect and sincere gratitude. A very special uh, thank you, and none of this would be possible without our wonderful foundation and uh, the wonderful Hall of Fame committee for their continued commitment to Centennial High School, which spans over 140 years. Um, we couldn't do this without you. We appreciate your support, um, and you guys have made it clear that, that you are here to help serve, and so that's also a call to action as our graduates, as our Bulldogs graduate, to become involved in our foundation. So the, this wonderful institution will continue at a high level forever. Special thank you also to Bulldog TV Student Council and, and a big one to my secretary, Pam Hope for all of her work, all of these students' work, the staff members' work that help put this assembly together fall out for all of you and make it a great, great centennial tradition. Um, Last thing I want to say is, is we have several monikers. In 140 years, you, you get a lot of explanations of Centennial High School. One of them is excellence, honor, and the Bulldog way. And as I think about this moniker, uh, we use it to verbalize, really, the portrait of what we expect a Centennial graduate to be. Um, these inductees epitomize and serve as exemplars for our students, our staff, and our community on what a bulldog should be like. So please pay attention, and they have a lot to give us. We thank you for your service to Centennial inductees, and on behalf of a grateful Centennial community, I'd like to congratulate our Hall of Fame inductees, Alan Baccarella, Carl Lucero, Sergeant Major Scott D. Grade, and Joe Hansen. And at this time, yes, big round of applause. Now to the good stuff, I'd like to introduce you to our student body president, Isaiah Ortiz. Thank you, Mr. Craddock, and good morning, Bulldogs. I'm Isaiah Ortiz, your student body president and chief operations officer of the Bulldog TV Network. Today, it is my honor to welcome each and every one of you to the 2023 Centennial High School Hall of Fame Induction Assembly. I'll be your MC this morning and can't wait to introduce you to these four incredible individuals that will soon be immortalized in Centennial history as they take their rightful places as the newest members of our Hall of Fame. Before that, we ask that you please stand and remove your hats for the presentation of the colors by the Centennial JROTC Color Guard under the direction of Major John Freeberg and the singing of the national anthem by Scola Cantorum under the direction of Miss Lee Kite.
Thank you, Color Guard and Scolo Cantorum. Excellent job, as always. Fun fact, that is actually the first time the colors have been posted and the national anthem has been sung in this brand new auditorium. So all of us just witnessed a little piece of Centennial history just now. Now I'd like to introduce our stage guest for this morning, if you'd please stand as your name is called. First, President of the Centennial High School Foundation, Mr. Mike Sexton. Next, Student Body Historian and Vice President of the Bulldog TV Network, Ms. Bella Vigil. Next, Bulldog TV staff member, Ms. Ari Martinez. And lastly, Senior Class President and Bulldog TV staff member, Ms. Kiana Phillips. Now, without further ado, let's meet the members of the 2023 Hall of Fame induction class. First, from the class of 1975, please welcome Mr. Alan Baccarella. Next, from the class of 1984, please welcome Mr. Carl Lucero. Next, from the class of 1989, please welcome retired Sergeant Major Scott D. Grade. And last, but certainly not least, from the class of 1974, please welcome your 2023 Brian McCartney Service to Centennial Award recipient, Ms. Johansson. Before I turn things over to Bella, if you direct your attention to any of the three screens, there will be an interactive moments throughout the rest of this morning's assembly. To prepare for that, if you would like to participate in our interactive elements, you want to take out your phones right now. And go ahead and text right shark 863 to 37607. Once again, that's right shark R I G H T S H A R K 863 to 37607. Now to introduce you to Mr. Alan Baccarella, here's Ms. Bella Vigil. Thank you, Isaiah. This morning, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Alan Baccarello. Alan Baccarella graduated from Centennial in 1975. Pursuing his love for art, he received a degree in graphic design. For several years, Alan worked as an illustrator, an art director for a magazine, and was a director of exhibitions at the Art Center in Pueblo. His artistic talent is often reflected in wildlife art. His paintings have been featured in several exhibits and continue to win awards throughout the region. His career took a turn towards public service when he was hired as an officer by the Colorado Springs Police Department. During his 27 years of service, Allen was recognized on numerous occasions for his ex extraordinary service. Allen continued his public service after retirement working with the Denver, School, Denver Public Schools and the Denver Police Department. He is noted for teaching classes that promote abstinence of alcohol, drug, and tobacco, earning the 2013 School Safety Professional of the Year in Colorado. His accomplishments are superior, but his friends will tell you that he is a very humble, moral person whose ethics and conducts have proven him worthy of recognition in the Centennial Hall of Fame. I now like to ask Mr. Baccarella to join me over at our interview set. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm well, we're really happy to have you. I heard you guys have breakfast, so was it good? <laughs> I, I just heard a rumor. Was it good? I didn't get a chance to try oh. it. I was a little too nervous, I think, after the drive down. But uh, oh. maybe there'll still be some stuff left over. Yeah, I heard you guys, you guys get cake after. 
So. Ooh, cake. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, so before we begin this interview, please look at the screen for an interactive vote on which picture is Mr. Baccarella's senior photo. <laughs> so which one was it? Well, for those of you that guessed C, you're correct. That's me. Oh, yay, 61%. <laughs> okay, so we have a few questions for you today. The first one is, what is your favorite memory from your time here at Centennial? Well, first of all, there's so many. Uh, I think the people have to rank right up there, my classmates, people that went before us. Uh, I think my favorite memory, though, is uh, we won the Bell in 75. Yep. <laughs> Actually, 74, excuse me, but we hadn't had it in a while, and that was quite the accomplishment for us. Um, other memories that rank really high is being one of the last classes to pass through the old building. And I mean the old, old building that was subsequently raised. Uh, we used to call it the old centennial, this big four-story monstrosity that was a beautiful building. I wish they had not torn it down. But, and then being one of the first classes to get to come through the new building, yeah, which is now the old building. So, <laughs> uh, But those are all fun memories. Uh, the neat thing about it is that the school was... A, uh, a safe place to go to, uh, lots of good teachers, lots of committed adults that, that were there to, to make sure that we were on the right path, and it really did pay off. That sounds great. Okay. What did you learn at Centennial that helped you later in life? You know, with all due deference and respect to Coach Brockman, uh, we didn't have some of the best athletic teams when I came through. Um, but, you know, the neatest thing about it was that we didn't quit. And that was something that I gave a lot of credit to the coaching staff at that, st that time. And the neat thing about that is that you learn things when you play athletics that did, you don't learn other ways. And, and the biggest thing of all, I think, was the, um, just the urge and the ability to rise from a position of, of maybe defeat and come back and continue the fight. And uh, in resiliency, I think, is what, the, you know, what they would, the word they'd use now. Um, but that has to be taught to you. I don't think you come by it naturally. Uh, and we had a great bunch of motivators uh, here in the school, and they, they really did bring that point home that you have to rise. You have to rise to the next challenge and face it. And it, it served me really, really well throughout my professional career, even t to this day. Yeah, that's like, that's really important life lessons. And then the third question we have is, life as a police officer can be hard sometimes. Through your career, did your art like help you with the day-to-day -day life as an officer? Uh, yeah, it did. Uh, you know, I did uh, a lot of posters and promotional materials. I did a series of, traffic education things uh, for the police department that ran in the Colorado Springs newspaper. Art was, um, was, has always been really my first love, and it, it really, going back to the amazing staff here at Centennial, I don't know that I'd have really uh, understood how accomplished I could become if, if one of the teachers here hadn't kind of bribed me into taking an art class here. And... Uh, it served me well when I went to, to CSU and found out that there were uh, thousands of people in my given major and, and it wasn't going to be what I thought it would be. Uh, it, you know, it was nice to have that fallback position. Um, art's always been special. It's been my relaxation. It's been my safe place, my haven. Um, and I, I just I, I love being in the studio and creating artwork. like it even better when it touches people. And, uh, but it served me very well as a police officer. It was a, a way to get away from things. That's amazing. Some of your art is actually up right now. And 
it's all really good. Like the bulldog, I swear I've seen that one before. I don't know where, but I know I've seen that one. They're all so gorgeous. The bulldog I did for the silent auction at uh, the 2016 Big Dog uh, celebration. And I think it ended up in the hands of, uh, uh, I think it was John Mastrini. And uh, he, uh, he bid on it. Um, it. It's one of my favorites. It was also the first piece I had ever done in colored pencil. Oh. And uh, the brook trout up on the upper left is a colored pencil piece as well. Uh, the bottom three, the peregrine falcon, the landscape of the, the snowy uh, meadow and, and the, the mine are all watercolors. And then the upper two on the right side are pen and ink. So uh, I try not to do things the same way every time. And it, it's just fun at that, to be able to have that variety and work that way. They are all really gorgeous. Um, your last question is, what is your best advice you can give this current generation of Centennial students? Um, the best advice I can give you is never shut a door. And the, the reason I say that is because things don't always work out the way that you plan. Uh, I went to CSU with the goal of becoming a wildlife biologist and, uh, you know, faced with the reality that I might not ever be able to find a job in that field, I had to go, well, let's see, what else do I do well? So you want to never close a door on whether it's uh, any ability that you have, whether it be music or, or art or writing or anything like that, because you just never know when it's going to come back and help you. So always keep your options open. Don't be afraid of setbacks. Sometimes a setback is a way of pushing you in another direction and accomplishing more than you would have if you would continued on the original path. So stay resilient, keep the doors open for you. Everything's a possibility. Thank you so much. That is really amazing advice. <laughs> so now as we wrap up this interview, uh, we have something we actually want to give you. We're grabbing it right now. <laughs> Thank you. It's your plaque. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bella, and congratulations once again to Mr. Baccarella. Now to introduce you to Mr. Carl Lucero, here's Ms. Ari Martinez. Thank you, Isaiah. This morning, it's an honor to introduce to you to Mr. Carl Lucero. Carl Lucero is a Grammy Award-winning musician, singer, songwriter, producer, teacher, and author with over 30 years of experience in the music industry. At Centennial, Carl focused on his love for music and lettered in marching and concert band. While playing several sports, at the end of his senior year in 1984, Carl moved to Texas and joined a band traveling across the country. He was signed with Reunion Records and toured with Glenn Campbell and other artists. Fueled by a passion for music and the production side, he moved to Nashville, Tennessee to gain further experience and attend college. In 1992, he opened his own recording studio and was able to land opportunities with several major labels. One of the highlights of his career was being involved in 1992 as a recording engineer for the Grammy Award-winning recording of Handel's Messiah, produced by Quincy Jones. Over the years, he was privileged to work with many famous musicians. Most recently, Carl served as the Executive Creative Arts Media Director for a mega church in California, where he supervised over 600 staff and volunteers and served in many capacities for six years. 
After returning to his hometown of Pueblo in 2011 with his wife and two sons, Carl has used his talents and experience to help local musicians fulfill their dreams, providing summer camps, youth programs, and serving as an adjunct professor at CSU Pueblo. Through his training academy, Perfect World Music Academy, hundreds of students throughout Colorado receive inspiration and support from their love of music. Now, Mr. Lucero, if you would join me over at the interview set, we can get to know you a little more. Good morning, Mr. Lucero. How are you doing today? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here. Okay, so before we get started, let's take a look at the screen again and pick who, which one Mr. Lucero is. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, C's a pretty good vote there. <laughs> Eddie Van Halen, hey, I'll take that. <laughs> okay, so which one is you, Mr. Lucero? Yeah, it's D. Uh, with, the, with the fine hair, right? <laughs> Boy, those were the days. We all used to part our hair in the middle and feather it back. Okay. Um, to start off, what was your favorite memory from your time at Centennial? Well, there's, like Alan, there was so many wonderful memories here at the school. Uh, I was trying to narrow them down. Uh, I have a couple short little memories that I'd like to share. Uh, I played, uh, my freshman year, I played baseball, football, and basketball, so all three sports, and, uh, and a lot of the, 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 teammates that I had on those teams were teammates that we played all the way through 12 years together. And, uh, and we had such a great camaraderie and it was just a wonderful time. The coaches, the teachers, the staff, Mr. Carrera was our principal. Everyone just chipped in and really, really helped guide us and, and lead us and teach us. And it was a wonderful, just a wonderful time. Uh, my band teacher, I was in stage band and concert band, it was Mr. Oliveri. And, uh, and one of the things that he used to, uh, he was a trumpet player, a really fine trumpet player. And, uh, and at the time, when I was in high school, I had started touring. I started playing in bands with adults. Uh, and I started kind of when I was really young, 12, 13, 14, playing. Uh, but in high school, I was in a band that would, on the weekends, we'd go play in Denver and out of state, different places. And Mr. Oliveri was really, really kind to let me pursue that and and not stifle that even though sometimes I had to be at a marching game or at a concert band concert and he would still give me credit for going out and playing and so I, I remember those times when the teachers were just very supportive and uh, and then the last memory that that I wanted to share was uh, I was as a freshman I, I I signed up for a drafting class and everyone in the, in the drafting class it was all the seniors it was all the studs they were all the football stars John Hancock and uh, uh, Troy Nikolai and just McCartney, all the, all, the, all the really big, big guys. And so it was me and an, a friend of mine that were a freshman, and we went into that class, and we were scared to death. We were scared to death. But these guys were so good, and the whole year they just really helped two young little freshmen really understand what high school is about, and they really helped us through. So, so the students, the staff, I, I just believe in Centennial, and it's a wonderful, wonderful place uh, for education. Thank you for sharing those memories. They sound great. Mm. Okay, next. What did you learn about Centennial that helped you later in your life? So I took a health occupations class my senior year here at Centennial, and that really, really helped. Uh, I, I got certified as a phlebotomist, and so I worked at both hospitals here in town. And in 1990, when I moved to Nashville, I was able to use that certification to work for the first couple of years to kind of work in the mornings at the hospital there and really have a fine income to be able to pursue the music that I was doing and, and put me through college as well. Awesome. So 
On that, this year is sort of a big year in the music industry, being thr Thriller's 40th anniversary. As most people know, Quincy Jones produced that album along with Michael Jackson. What was it like working with such a legendary producer as Quincy Jones on Handel's Messiah, which you won a Grammy for? So that project was a really uh, fun project to be a part of. Uh, a friend of mine who was uh, kind of a co-manager for me in Nashville, Roger Holmes, uh, got me that that uh, that situation on on. Uh, I worked with a gentleman called Richard Richard Smallwood. So there was many artists on this compilation CD. It was uh, Stevie Wonder, Al Jarreau, Tevin Campbell, Take Six, Patty Austin. There was a whole bunch of wonderful R&B artists that we came together and redid uh, classical songs, but they were done in a pop format. And so, uh, so we did our song in Nashville, and uh, it was just a wonderful experience. It was great to be a part of, of, of that era. That's awesome. Um, what is your best advice you could give to this current generation of Centennial students? So I would say, I like what Alan said, uh, always open, you know, never close a door. I would uh, even take it a step further and say, walk through doors that are offered, that are, o when you have opportunities that arise, don't be afraid to walk through those opportunities and make the most of them. Uh, sometimes opportunities come and we think they're gonna be around forever and, and, and opportunities don't stick around forever. Uh, pursue those dreams that you have because you all can do further, far better things than, than we've ever done on, on this stage. And we believe that. And uh, so pursue your dreams, work hard, and, uh, and, and be friendly and kind, and those things will come back around. Thank you for the advice. Um, We're so honored to have you, Mr. Lucero. to give you this plaque today, Mr. Lucero. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Thanks, Ari, and congratulations to Mr. Lucero. Next, to introduce you to retired Sergeant Major Scott D. Grade, here's Ms. Kiana Phillips. Thank you, Isaiah. This morning, it is my honor to introduce each of you to retired Sergeant Major Scott D. Grade. Scott Grade, Bulldog Class of 1989, honorably served in the U.S. Marine Corps for over 30 years. He retired in 2021 as a Senior Operations Director charged with overseeing all operations for U.S. Marine Corps Reserve Units consisting of 100,000 military personnel across the world. Throughout his military career, Scott was honored with numerous medals, badges, and citations, including two Legion of Merit medals. For many young Marines, he was a leader who instilled a belief and confidence in their lives. His career exemplified mentorship, leadership, and unwavering commitment to the professional development of officers and enlisted Marines. As a Bulldog, Scott played sports lettering for three years, his superb athleticism helped the Bulldogs bring home the 1987 Football State Championship trophy. The brotherhood, inspirational leadership, and teamwork that was bonded in during high school remains in Scott's core today. Scott currently works for Tech Systems Incorporation as a talent advocate manager for workforce development in Denver. He is also active as a volunteer coach for numerous youth sports, including flag football, boys basketball, and lacrosse. Now, Mr. Grade, if you'd like to join me at our interview set, let's get to know you a little better. Good morning. It's a pleasure to meet you. Good morning. Pleasure to meet everybody here. And what an auditorium this is. Wow. First off, I'd like to say thank you for your service. Thank you. And what was your favorite memory at Centennial? Was it winning the football trophy or? Well, 
besides uh, fending Ben Gettler off eating my tater tots at lunch, um, <laughs> he's always a bigger guy than I was. Uh, I, there's, there's a lot of things that go into making memories, but I think if you say you got to pick one thing, um, it, it would have been the, uh, our football championship in 1987. We... Uh, we worked really hard in the summer in August, and you all understand how hot Pueblo gets in August. So, so being out there, we didn't do two a days. We started at seven in the morning and went until noon. So it was still 100 degrees when we were done. So, but that that was probably my my most favorite memory from being a, a Centennial Bulldog. I completely forgot, but if you could look at the screen and oh, yeah. figure out which one is Mr. Grade. Yeah, I, I had the, <laughs> I had the part in the middle, of course. So. Hair was kind of a big thing back then, but the Marine Corps cured me of that pretty quick. <laughs> I like Prince Eric personally. Out of everything and in your experiences at Centennial, what did you learn that helped you later in life? It's, uh, I, I think as people know that, that live here now, it, it's tough growing up in Pueblo. And it's not, uh, you know, we live in Castle Rock now, and it's so beautiful, it's so nice, and everything. And, uh, but in Pueblo, you, you actually fight for everything you get. And being in Centennial, it's the family that helps you get through it. I, when I moved here, um, it was my freshman year, so that's hard enough to move as a freshman. But I, ha I was fortunate to have friends that took me in because sports was a big deal in high school at that time for all of us. And, uh, and it was a way, a way of life. And the, uh, just being part of the family that Centennial has, it didn't matter if you were in band, it didn't matter drama, sports. I, I knew people from all walks of life at Centennial, and it was, uh, I went from a really small school to a huge high school at the time, and so it was intimidating, and, uh, but it's the family that really gets you through, and, and I think you all understand that you have to lean on each other. You can't, you can't make it through the world on your own. You just can't. I couldn't agree with that more. Support system is great. Um, did you always want to serve in the Marines? Um, yes. Um, there's, I, I know one of the questions, so I want to kind of save my answer for the, that end question. So, but uh, um, the, I always, my father was a Marine, and uh, I was born on Camp Pendleton. And uh, actually, I was born almost on the Marine Corps birthday, which would have been cool. So, but uh, um, I always enjoy, always looked up to those that, that serve their communities. And, uh, and I used to, when I'd be driving, when the old Sutherlands, I don't know if people remember where Sutherland and Lumber was. I used to work, my father worked there. And uh, I would drive down I-25, and uh, there would be these big trucks. And I was like, man, those are marine trucks. And that was awesome. And I thought it'd be really cool to, to continue that. And lo and behold, it was actually Army, but uh, out of Fort Carson. <laughs> but, you know, not understanding that. But, uh, yeah, I always thought... Uh, you know, like I said, I don't want to answer it completely because part of my later answer has some of this, but I always thought I would be a Marine. I just thought maybe a different path. And what did your mil military service teach you that could be valuable to students who are also interested? Um, a lot of things that I learned from sports and Coach Tom Brockman and, and my, my, my parents, and um, there's... You, you have to be, I heard it, you have to have core values. You have to value something. And having learned exactly, because as, as we grow up, we think we understand what honor, courage, commitment, uh, resiliency, things like that are. And, and little, you know, unbeknownst to us, 17, 18-year-olds, we don't know everything. Um, but we thought we did. But you just learn so many different things. You learn how to how to work in a di diverse community. You, you learn how to work uh, 
with people that you might not have ever had an opportunity that's from Maine, Texas. I mean, you just, just the people that come together and form a Marine unit is, is phenomenal. And, and there's so many things that you can learn from them that helps in your life. That's, that's probably the biggest thing I take from the military is because I went from one bulldog family to a Marine Corps family. Lo and behold, our mascot's a, a bulldog. So, and, uh, and, and the only dogs we own are English bulldogs as well. So, so we have a six, six month old Archibald Henderson, who was a first commandant of the Marine Corps is our bulldog. So, so it's, uh, it's, you go from one family to another and that's, it's truly, I think those two things are so unique and they're, but yet they're combined together. That's what I learned. Those experiences are great. So I think this is your favorite question. <laughs> what is your best advice to give to the current generation of Centennial students? And I think I'm just going to say it a different way, maybe, um, but it's kind of the same is, is have a plan because as we say in the Marine Corps, your best laid plan is great until the first round comes down range and changes your whole plan. But you have to start somewhere. Have a plan with what you want, but be able to be adaptable, be able to, uh, t you know, look inside, look outside, figure out what's the branch plan off of your main plan. And maybe you'll come back to that, that main plan because you just, for me, I thought I was going to be a Marine Corps officer. That's what I really thought. But I ended up being Marine enlisted because my initial plan, again, 17, 18-year-old, know it all, right? Didn't really work out the way it should have. Um, and, you know, being older now, all my fault, not anybody else's fault. So, but I, the, the branch plan I went on was, was exactly where I needed to be. What I did, I got to serve in, in many different areas. I built schools in Iraq. I got to, uh, uh, I was down in South America helping teach classes in South America. Things that I never thought, you know, growing up in Pueblo that, that I would be able to do. And, uh, when I retired, I ended up being the number two sergeant major in the Marine Corps. So, so that was, never thought that was my plan. Coach Brockman and myself, we had a plan. I was going to play Fort Lewis football and go from there. And, but, uh, but, uh, he built all the, helped me build all that foundation. And, and it's, uh, I, I would not be, if, I think my life would have been totally different if I didn't come to high school here in Pueblo. And, uh, and I'm glad, I'm very happy that I did because it is definitely been a big part of, of my life. And, and I instill that, I hope, to my daughter and my son. And, and uh, I mean, my daughter's already surpassed me and everything. So, so <laughs> son's getting there. He's only 12. So. Thank you. I'm glad to be sitting here with you today. Now, I think the most part you're here for, let's get you that plaque. Yes. It'll go on the wall with all the Marine Corps stuff I have. Thank you. Thank you, Kiana, and congratulations once again to Mr. Grade. Now, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce this year's 2023 Brian McCartney Service to Centennial Award recipient, an individual whom many of you probably already know quite well, Ms. Joe Hansen. <laughs> Joe's love of all things Bulldog began as a child, watching her brother play football for legendary coach Jim Greaves. Jo spent her first two years of high school at the Grand Old Centennial. She was involved in speech and debate, pep club, NHS, and Pom Pups. She was part of the Pom Pup state championship team in her senior year. Jo's career path led her to become a professional school counselor, which led her back to Centennial when Principal Frank Latino hired her. Jo spent the remainder of her career at CHS serving as president of the Colorado School Counseling Association. Jo then retired from that in 2014. And Jo has been a part of the CHS Foundation Board since 2008 and currently serves as the president-elect. She spends hours volunteering with the museum crew. Her dedication to Centennial was instrumental in helping to preserve many artifacts that were moved to the new school. 
Joe serves on the Hall of Fame committee, is very involved with Bell Week and merchandise sales, and is a co-sponsor of Newman Club for the current student body. Joe is well known and well loved by Bulldogs past and present, and truly embodies the motto, once a Bulldog, always a Bulldog. Now, Ms. Hansen, if you would be so kind to join me over at our interview set, we'll take a moment to take an even, even deeper dive into your time at Centennial over the years. Don't interrupt, nobody wants to miss this. But with our new school, the bells might be turned off or they may ring. Students, please don't go anywhere. We will excuse you to next hour. Staff at this time, if you need to go to your fourth hour, please do so. Don't want to interrupt this awesome assembly. So please be patient and I know you guys are engaged. Thank you. All right, if we can go ahead and pay attention to the screen for the four pictures to show up to see which one is Joe Hansen. I think that's Barbie. Well, there we go. Uh, to start off with our first question, what was your favorite memory from your time at Centennial? Wow. Um, so I, I just would like to point out that the whole world was in black and white then. <laughs> like, we didn't have color. It, it, it truly was all black and white. It's been so long. So I have a, I have a really a boatload of memories of Centennial because I've spent so much of my life here. Um, but from my years as a uh, from my years as a student, I think not unlike my colleagues here, it was really all about the people. Um, I have a wonderful group in the class of seventy four friends sitting right here in this row, who peer pressured me into some amazing things, and not in the way you think either. They peer pressured me into what really became the best decisions of my life. And I have a wonderful memory of us in a building that wasn't quite built yet, because it was different than this one, 50 years ago in that new building. And the cheerleaders stood on tables in the commons to lead the bell assembly. We didn't have an auditorium. We didn't have a gymnasium. And those of us who were on the dance team, Palm Pups is what we called it then, stood around the outside. So I have memories of all of those folks um, coming into this new building. And really, it's about the people. I have a great memory of that uh, state championship we won in Palm Pups, which was kind of unbelievable to us. We all went, what? Um, anyway, so, but uh, like, like the other folks talked about, those memories are wrapped around the folks. So the next question is, what did you learn at Centennial that helped you later on in life? I had amazing teachers here. I just, I, I don't know any other way to say that. I had a man, Mel Richards, for chemistry, who taught me chemistry. Now, if you know me, you get that I can't even spell chemistry. But I, I went off to CSU with an amazing background because he was that good a teacher. I had um, Bob Collier, who some of you may remember, historian extraordinaire, and he taught me how to think. He was the person who put together for me that you can learn anything if you know how to think. And I went off to school, and that really, really helped me. So um, I think it was mostly teachers who influenced me to be able to move forward and, and out um, into the world. And although you might not know it right now, I had an extraordinary uh, public speaking teacher, Bob Ham. 
and he helped me find my voice in the world. So I think it's kind of ironic that I'm sitting here with you because I'm a member of the first graduating class in this building, and you were uh, a member of the first graduating class from the previous iteration of Centennial. What does it mean to you to be the first service to Centennial recipient in this building? Wow. Um, it is such an honor and such a privilege to, to win um, the award anyway, because it is named after Brian McCartney, who was the extraordinary number one bulldog, the dad of my very dear friend, Anne. And I met Brian when I was 10 years old. Um, and so just winning this award is really an honor. It is very humbling. But the connection from first dogs out to long time ago first dogs out is very special to me in a way we are like bookends, you and I, because we bookend the time in that wonderful building that still won't be knocked down yet. I'm not sure what it's fighting for, um, but it's coming down at some point. So it is indeed an honor and a privilege. And what a wonderful thing to get to be in this auditorium, because this is really an upgrade from the schools I got to go to. What is your best advice that you could give to this current generation of Centennial students? So my advice, and kids from Newman Club, I apologize because you hear this all the time from me, but it is the grocery cart rule. And that is that Centennial and all of your life, really, is like a grocery cart. And you're gonna get out of it exactly what you put in. And so I invite all of you as students to put in as much as you can to your school time. Join the clubs, do the sports, take that class you think is not for you because that's possibly gonna lead to the adventure of your lifetime. So you put in a lot of yourself, you jump in with both feet, and that is how you get so much more than you ever thought you could get back from that school, from that lifetime, from that activity. And I just have one more last question. So many of the students here know you very well, and we appreciate you for all the things you do. Um, what is it that like motivates you to keep doing all this stuff in the community? <laughs> I love that. I heard that loud and clear. What is wrong with me? And that's a whole nother assembly, let me tell you. Because that's going to take a long time. But I tell you what, what motivates me is the bulldog spirit. And the fact that from however many buildings we've been in, and there's some, uh, there's some controversy about that. We think we're in building number five but it might actually be building number six. But from the beginning of Centennial, even before 1876, this school has such a long and a proud and a wonderful tradition and legacy. And that legacy helped form me. And so I guess I feel like it is my privilege to be able to help to continue to form students in that bulldog tradition. I just love it. My friend Corky Madrid would say, when the bulldog spirit bites you, it's got you. And long years ago, it got me. Thank you so much. Now here is your Brian McCartney Award. Thank you. All right, let's hear it one more time for our four individuals on the stage today.
Before we wrap things up, to deliver a few comments, please welcome the current president of the Centennial High School Foundation, as well as another proud member of the class of 1974, Mr. Mike Sexton. On behalf of the Centennial High School Foundation, I would like to congratulate our distinguished honorees this evening. Thank you. I would also like to thank the Centennial High School Foundation Hall of Fame Selection Committee, who have dedicated so many volunteer hours to make this wonderful event possible. Your continued dedication to Centennial High School and the rich legacy by honoring alumni and staff is very much valued and appreciated. I have a message from the Centennial Foundation. The foundation continues to support scholarships, programs, and activities here at Centennial High School. All donations that the foundation receives directly impact the lives of the Centennial students. You are the legacy of Centennial High School. The foundation encourages you to take advantage of our scholarship opportunities that will be available uh, soon. So we, we, we appreciate your, your interest in all the programming and it, we do have funding opportunities. So if the teachers that are here today, um, you can make a, a, a submission of an application and the foundation will evaluate and fund some of these programs. Again, thank you for attending this morning's assembly in honoring our distinguished Bulldogs. And remember, the Bulldog legacy lives on. Thank you, Mike. Following the conclusion of this morning's assembly, we would like to invite each of our inductees and their families that are in attendance today to our brand new museum for a small reception put on by Centennial's Girls, Cap Girls Cabinet, sponsored by Ms. Ann Fodderwright. Before we end today's assembly, I would like to extend a huge thank you to everyone who makes this event possible, especially Ms. Pam Hove, Principal Secretary at Centennial High School. For the past month or so, she has been working tirelessly with the Hall of Fame Committee and Student Government and Bulldog TV to produce today's assembly from putting together all the slides you've seen on the screen today to notifying our inductees of their selection and even organizing their bios, which you heard today. So let's hear a huge round of applause for her. Also, a special thank you goes out to our Hall of Fame committee, Jero TC, Scola Cantorum, Student Government, and Bulldog TV, so let's hear it for them. And with that, this concludes the 2023 Centennial High School Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Thank you to everyone for coming this morning, and we'll see you next year as we welcome yet another group of members into the Hall of Fame. All right, this time students, please report their records.